This is Dr. Jerry Hesch. I work at Hesch Institute in Aurora, Colorado. Um, I have a bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degree in physical therapy. Um, this is my 320 page book that I wrote. Um, and this presentation is on a patient who has hypermobility syndrome. And I want to present a very important concept that I don't think many clinicians are aware of. And that is that when you try to evaluate passive end feel motion in a joint, in a person with hypermobility syndrome, you simply cannot test it in the traditional manner because you will get false information, okay? Um, to give you an example of a passive spring test, I'm going to find the lower sacrum. This is her tailbone, and so lower sacrum is here. So I'm going to come up here, okay? I'm about at S4-5, and I want to evaluate, is there joint play, a little tiny motion available in backward bending. It's an incredibly small movement, but it's a very important movement. Okay, so I'm going to come and we're going to pretend she's a, that she doesn't have hypermobility syndrome. Okay, so on most, you know, typical patients, I would push down on the sacrum till all motion is taken up. And then I would do a forward thrust, so I'm going to push towards the floor. That's it. And she had spring. The joint did have spring motion, and it did bounce back with integrity. If I test my MP joint, I can bend my pinky finger all the way back. So I've taken up all the tension in the front of that joint, and, and in all of the, all of all three joints, okay? Um, so I, I push it all the way to the end, and then I spring it, and it does go further. There's some elasticity. There's a forward spring, and it recoils backwards with integrity, and that tells me in that direction my MP joint is working normally. Okay? With injuries, we can find blocked motion. So sometimes we'll find we can take a joint, toward, you can take up the slack, in a joint and then you try and spring it and there's no movement and so that joint might need treatment. Or the opposite extreme would be you take up the slack and then you spring it and the motion is excessive based on norms, based on that person's body type, etc. And that can represent ligament damage or muscle inhibition, etc. Okay, so on my patient here, I'm going to spring the ischium medially on the left side. And that motion happens in different parts of her body, some of it in her SI joint, some of it where the pelvis and the spine connect, some of it in the hip. Okay? So if I push to the end point, so now I've taken up the slack, now I spring it and it looks like it moves normally. So there's nothing to treat. Wrong big mistake. Because she has hypermobility syndrome, her ligaments are more stretchy. She has more elastin in her, in her connective tissue. And that means that a traditional take up the slack test actually does not take up the slack properly you have to add an element of time. You need what's called viscoelastic creep, which simply means that you do a low load, long duration stretch to take up that, that, that extra movement, okay? So I'm gonna show you some very different results when I do this test correctly. So the first way is the traditional model, push until it stops, and you assume you've taken up the slack and then you spring it and it moves, okay? But when I work with a person with hypermobility syndrome, 
I need to really slow it down and take much longer to take up the slack. So here we go. I've taken up the slack traditionally. I'm going to keep pushing on that for 10 seconds. Okay? And then I'm going to do the forward thrust. And now I'm trying to do the forward thrust and there's no movement. So she actually has a motion restriction that would be missed with traditional orthopedic manual physical therapy testing. Okay? And so that tells me that there is a, a, a small malpositioning of the pelvis. Looks like pelvis is oriented to the left in three-dimensional plane. I'm not saying that's inside her SI joint. I mean a little bit of that movement probably is. I can't measure it in the clinic. You know, we'd have to use some very, very sophisticated laboratory motion testing to discern if and how much of that happens inside the SI joint. But certainly the whole pelvis can move and it can become stuck in certain directions. Um, I'm going to test forward spring. And so I'm taking up the slack. I'm on the ischium. And I'm waiting 10 seconds. And then I spring it and it does, it does, it does spring forward and bounce back. So in that direction she has mobility, but in this direction she does not. And my experience tells me with this, when it's lacking this way, it will also lack going that way on, and both sides will be restricted. And, and this is a pattern I, I stumbled on and I named it left lower windswept pelvis. Okay, this pattern can create increased tension in the left sacrotuberous ligament. And so I'm on that ligament and I'm trying to spring it forward. It should have a little spring, but it's very tight. It feels like bone. This sacrotuberous ligament is right here and I can indent it. It, it has a little bit of spring. Okay, this one does not. Congruent with that being um, side bent left. This pattern can also bring the tailbone into left side bending, but I don't want it, yep, she has a little bit of a left side bent tailbone. I'm going to test the sacrospinous ligament. It's rock hard on the right side of her body. On the left side I can indent that ligament and I can spring it, but I don't want to detract from the message. The main message I'm trying to convey is that you cannot test and feel motion in a joint in a person who has hypermobility syndrome or EDS, Arrows Down Low Syndrome. Um, you cannot do a traditional orthopedic manual physical therapy joint test in which you simply take up the slack quickly and then thrust it and say, oh, moves normally, has, has good forward thrust. Um, my addition to that manner of testing is that I want to feel the recoil also. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop jammering and yammering away. <laughs> I think I've made my point. Thank you.